I want to find out, you know, in my quest, I want to find out why some of the systems that we've grown up with are more fragile than we think they are, why a lot of the economic theory that we studied in school, some of us studied in school, have, will have no relevance going forward, and why the idea of money is about to fall off the cliff. Everybody right now, okay, you're focusing in on, a, a lot of people are picking up Ludwig von Mises from 1899, they're picking up on uh, uh, Keynes, Keynesian economics, uh, they are looking at quantitative models, they're looking at Krugman, uh, they're right. looking at Bernanke, they're looking at indicators, they're looking at money and velocity of money and graphs and quantitative models, but none of, uh, the, none of them are looking at uh, earlier economics, maybe the works of Veblen, they're not looking at socioeconomics, everything is time and space now when you, when you listen to the college kids, oh, I'm traveling through time and space. Well, we're not traveling through time and space here. The economy is structured differently than all of these economic models would have you believe. And really, we're following several trajectories which intersect to make a structure up. And we know what the elements of our economy consist of. The physical world, look around you, that's where you are. All right, you're, you're about to give us, you're, you're going to give us the, the six pillars of a functioning economy. economy. Right. And, right. It, and I, know, I know that there's at least six elements to an economy, and there could be as many as, as 60. It doesn't really matter. I just know that I need six elements to have a structure, to have a self-supporting, right. stabilizing structure. So I, I know that the physical world is there. So uh, once in the, in the turn back the Wayback Machine, there was some guy, that's the human capital, is on top of the world, and the physical world around him is his local economy. And he, he's limited by how far he could walk. He's limited by his technology in terms what, of what he can extract on that land, of what he can eat, what he can't eat. And he, he forms for himself a society which is based on, on the rule of law. Now, the guy might be carrying a club, and that's the rule of law as far as that guy's concerned. But nevertheless, the, that's the making of your society. And in an advanced society, we have money that's on top of it. So we have a physical world, the human capital, transportation, technology, rule of law, and then on top of that, monetary structure. So what all of the current economists are doing, and the older ones, they used to look at how people work. Now we look at how numbers work. So the later economists are all saying, okay, how can we study the monetary structure through models to come up with a result? And with Keynes, it's the idea that they can put money into the economy. They have money multipliers. And what they're, they're not taking into account are all the other elements that you need for, for a society to work. You need the rule of law. You need technology. And then our technology is oil, oil energy-based. It's based on oil-based transportation. Our law is based on uh, great military projections that occur worldwide. We have the U.S. as the great sea empire. We have the Soviet Union as a great land empire. And these two were in contention. We have transportation that can take people and goods worldwide now very efficiently using oil in the sea lanes and also by air. So we've, our economy has adapted to all of this technology, all of this uh, transportation, and as human beings, now we've gone, and I'll quote this guy that I can't stand, Thomas Friedman, from, uh, from, from uh, local to global, with the world becoming flat. And in many respects, it has been flat for a long time. But what happens when the monetary structure breaks down? And if you notice, that was the last layer in our economy I talked about. I talked about the physical world being first and the monetary structure being last. And we're watching this monetary structure break down. And along with this monetary structure breaking down, a lot of the issues which are having to become overcome through this monetary breakdown happen to be issues of law. So that's why when we talk about Greece, they're trying to decide who's going to take the haircut on all of these Greek sovereign bonds. In terms of MF Global, uh, we're, they're looking to have the customers take the haircut on the MF Global debacle. And there's a lot of lawyers that are lining up uh, in favor of J.P. Morgan's interests through MF Global Holdings. There are a lot of interests uh, in brokerage companies to, to try to, you know, bend the rule of law to their advantage and overlook the idea of justice. And in technology, you know, the U.S. had a great 
at a monopoly on technology post World War II. It had it had a lot of the German technology, which was transferred prior to that. A lot of the engineering textbooks were in German, and all of a sudden, the U.S. is the only country that hasn't been bombed out. The only industrialized country there was European countries that were industrialized, and Japan that was indu highly industrialized. The U.S. is the only one with surviving infrastructure, surviving uh, science, and now a lot of the engineering talent has been uh, outsourced to support manufacturing, which is happening elsewhere. Right. So you can see this pyramid that our society. But, but relies let, let me upon stop you. here. Let me stop you as a layman here and, and get you know w with your functioning economy, the pillars of a functioning economy. If any one of them, I mean, are they is is any one of them just as important? Uh, as another, I mean, can we have a complete monetary structure breakdown, which is what we're on the verge of, you know, and, and, I, and I don't think we can stress that enough. We are on the verge of seeing that monetary structure come apart, right, with a little tiny nation like Greece. Um, can we lose that or can we lose any other uh, single pillar and still have a functioning economy where where things will go on as somewhat uh, close to normal with you know, uh, uh, energy showing up at your uh, gas station with food showing up in your shelves, or is or is this thing so systemic? Any one pillar uh, is uh, you know taken away, and it all comes apart. Well, in in a way that these things are layered up so that as a human being, you want to always be in a society that has the top layer. The top layer is monetary structure. If you have a, a, a functioning monetary structure, functioning rule of law, this is sort of a pyramid. Functioning transportation, human capital. Then all of a sudden, your physical world is the whole globe, and you can access energy across the globe. You can access people across the globe, technology across the globe. You can use a computer. It's built in China seamlessly, and, and that's the kind of economy that we live in. But in total, the thing is also three-dimensional or maybe even eight-dimensional, and it really is – I think the universe is eight-dimensional, but really you're looking at, at any one of these uh, supports – and the structure, the basic structure of, of connectiveness breaks down. Without a monetary structure, the whole system breaks down, and you'll find that transportation will break down for you, your access to technology will break down for you, your human capital, which was global, is all of a sudden local, your physical world, which is global, is all of a sudden local. Let's say the U U.S. dollar doesn't become convertible one day, and then all the things that you import are no longer there for you. Or you know, Greece defaults, and then no one wants to extend credit to Greece, and their monetary layer breaks down, and they have a, a period of, of, of hardship, but lo and behold, someone will still probably lend to them once they go through a bankruptcy. It would actually be better for them, like Iceland. But we're watching the global monetary structure break down. We're watching, certainly, the rule of law in the U.S. break down. The, tech rule, uh, the idea of having uh, technological dominance is breaking down in the U.S., the rule of law in the U.S. is still firm because part of that legal projection is military. So when you look at these six elements, these are the six core elements. I mean, there's more core elements that you could have for a functioning economy. Accounting is one of them. How do you well, account, account for oil? Do you account for it as something that's depletable, or do you cost your oil in its replacement cost? Do you cost human capital in energy? So there's a lot of different – and I, I can tell you that the economy is a very complex thing. How human beings work is a very complex thing. But sure. we arrange ourselves in a natural but formation. Look, this is what like we need. Of, I mean th this is a discussion we, we need to have on occasion to, to, because you know, we're inundated with, with, the, uh, with the fantasy reality. right? We're inundated with that nonstop. You know, ben Bernanke's got the answer because he can uh, – somehow prop up uh, the European debt load by shoveling money through the IMF who can uh, magically switch it into something that the ECB is it's legal for them to borrow and that could spread this debt out but but it really you know we need to to look at what the basic pillars of an economy are so we can see when this is going to break down and, and what stage of that breakdown we're in guys uh, Warren Pollock is going to monetary structure can break in if it can break in a nation like Greece and affect the whole world uh, certainly, uh, that is in the uh, process of breaking down. Rule of law. We see law, uh, I think, is further along in destruction than, than anything else, uh, Warren, in these pillars. The rule of law no longer, no longer applies in this country. The rule of law was suspended in order to save free market capitalism. You know, We suspended the rule of law 
we did uh, uh, things, uh, ex- extraordinary measures outside the Constitution in order to keep these firms alive and running. Well, uh, well, and na- well they, you know, we have the rule of law. And what they've done is they've uh, suspended the rule of law in favor of a flawed monetary model. So the Federal Reserve has all these ideas that if you keep on doing this, then you'll get that. If they, if they take this action with interest rates and set them to zero, or if they inject more money into the economy, then Keynesian economic model will, fl- uh, you know, will, will lock in, and all of a sudden we'll have an economy with growth. But none of them know how important the rule of law is. And when you look at places like the U.S., we see civil law breaking down. We see extreme amounts of law in terms of individu- individuals, uh, being prosecuted worldwide for offenses against corporations and intellectual property. And this sort of duality of law where there's a lot of it, which means that you don't have justice, and where there's none of it, which means you don't have justice, is what's happening. It's what happened in places like North Korea. North Korea, they have a tremendous rule of law, but it, they have no sense of justice. And that's the breakdown of, that's the breakdown of law. Well, let's look at these examples. We talked about this during the break. Those of you watching on JTV uh, probably heard Warren and I uh, talking about this. But uh, So let's see what happens in, in, in countries, in these microcosms that we've seen over history when these pillars come apart. And you brought up North Korea. So, so run with it. I mean, give us uh, – Well, they certainly have a physical world. So we're looking at a physical world, human capital, transportation, technology, rule of law, and monetary structure. So to the North Korean – they have this idea called, I think it's Juji, where uh, they try Juji, where they try to be self-sufficient, living what they with what they have in their own physical world, and occasionally they'll go to China and import used bicycles, or they'll buy used electronics equipment that's ten years old from the U.S. or whatever. But you're looking at a society that has very little transportation outside of its own country. They have technology that's at a very large, low level. Human beings become less valuable to them because they consume food. They don't have a rule of law on an international scale. And the rule of law in, internally is out of a police state. The monetary structure is not convertible. So you can have all the North Korean dollars that, that they'll give you, and you, you, you can't get anything without a ration ticket, and you, you can't spend your money externally. So you could look at what a global society, and that's the U.S., you look at a local society, and that's North Korea. So are we on that trajectory where we're moving from what used to be the U.S. towards North Korea? Well, if we look at, if we look at another example, uh, you know, I, we, I want to skip Greece uh, slash Europe U.S. for a minute and go to the Soviet Union because a lot of people might think that, you know, North Korea, sure – you know they they close off their borders they they become isolationists and uh, their economy uh, uh, tumbles because of it and because of uh, greed and corruption by uh, leadership. But if we look at the Soviet Union, arguably you know the most powerful nation or the most powerful conglomerate on the planet for an extended period of time, what happened to them? What happened to them is they they moved from a, a state of peasanthood. In uh, prior to World War II, to an industrialized society after World War II, and then they took their whole resources and it dedicated them to the defense of their nation and through the projection of empire worldwide, and what progress they made wound up being jeopardized because they could no longer afford to support their empire. And that's exactly what's happening to the U.S. So when people look at the Soviet Union, they look at the abject failure of the Soviet Union, but they're not starting early enough because prior to World War II, that was a peasant society with a very low le- level of literacy and a very low level of education. And then they were decimated through World War II they rebuilt a, 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 an engineering-based society with what they had, and they wound up having a tremendous uh, human capital in the field of the arts, in the field of engineering and sciences, and they allocated that to, this, to a domestic rule of law and to an international rule of law. Internationally, they were focused on becoming an empire. 
domestically, they also became a police state. And these two things defeated that nation's ability to move forward. So people in the U.S., oh, oh they're communistic, oh, they're socialistic, you know, but maybe they were just mismanaged. And that's certainly the case in the U.S. In many respects, the United States is very much like the Soviet Union was prior to its breakdown from the opposite direction. Because we have a physical world in the U.S. which has been mostly depleted. When you look at the oil uh, that we used to have, we used to be a massive uh, exporter of oil. We used to be a uh, have, uh, have the top technology in terms of manufacturing. After World War II, we were at the apex of the whole world. Our human capital was worth more than anyone else's human capital worldwide. We could have a factory worker earning more than a professional in other parts of the world. We had transportation that was luxuriously car-based, as if oil would be a, an endless resource. And our rule of law was sound. And all of these elements in our society now are, are breaking down. And we are going to wind up with, in the U.S., without a monetary structure, with selective rule of law, without a technological base to rebuild our manufacturing. We're based on car transportation. We won't have that going forward because we won't be able to afford the energy and we could change it to natural gas shortly and live like Saudi Arabia for five to ten years, but that's about it. Our human capital is all college educated now, but it's not any smarter than it was previously. It's just the same folks now that everyone is enjoying my kid is a genius in Kentucky. I'll send him to Kentucky U and he'll learn astronomy and economics and then we'll, we'll send him uh, into the Federal Reserve to get a job or perhaps he'll be a lawyer in bankruptcy court for MF Global. It ain't going to happen. Right. It's not going to happen. So we're going to be on Island America. The only thing that the U.S. has in terms of, of rule of law, which no one else has, is the fact that we project military power worldwide. We have aircraft carriers, I think, which are 100,000 tons, which are twice as big as, as everyone else's. What, I, what, I, what few countries have aircraft carriers. We happen to have the largest ones in nuclear power. We have $2 billion B-2s. We have uh, an, 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 what seems to be a, an inexhaustible army, but I think that that's much, much more perception than reality. We have military bases worldwide that would rival that of the Roman Empire. So we are projecting the rule of law everywhere. And where the rule of law fails, we help to destabilize countries, to put them into a state of chaos. And much of the, 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 the world has never had a rule of law. The only rule of law it's seen was when it was subjugated uh, through either the Roman Empire or the Ottoman Empire or the U.S. Empire or the Soviet Empire, as is the case you know, with Afghanistan. It, when there's no empire there, it becomes lawless. All right, let me let me ask you this. I, I'm pulling. I'm trying to pull questions out of the chat room while you're uh, while you're uh, talking there. And and uh, one of them was your opinion on BDI dry index. Uh, and I think probably oh, means, okay. means multi dry, dry index. Been, well, yeah, it's fell it's off been, the cliff. Yeah, it's, it's been fell, through the floor. It's gone through the floor. And you know, part of that is that the U.S. is now an energy exporter because the economic activity is so is so poor. There's still an imbalance in the price of of refined oil. In so this, you know, then why isn't the price of fuel going down? Why isn't the price of oil going down? How come the retail price of natural gas isn't going down? How come the stock market isn't going down? And these are just dislocations, distortions. So there's no rhyme or reason to these things anymore. And the, the bottom line is, you know, we get back to the Greek, Greek question. Yeah, and I, I, do, I do want to jump to that because that was one of the <laughs> questions coming in the chat, which is, you know, um, I, I, we painted the picture of what, what happens to economies when you when these pillars crumble, fall apart. You know, the, the outcome is always the same. It's failure of that society. Am I right? Yeah, well, it's a, 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 you, you start to feel it monetarily. Then you feel the rule of law. And you can see that with $400 uh, red light cameras in California. Can you imagine you're earning $7 a year and getting $7 an hour and getting a $400 ticket for passing a red light? Can you imagine downloading one song? from the internet and being sued for $150,000? Could you imagine uh, giving up your citizenship, moving to New Zealand, and then having the FBI show up at your door and confiscate all your assets? That's the rule of law breaking down, my friend. And 
once that's gone, it becomes impossible to start a business. It becomes impossible to save your money. And when the Greek, the Greek question right now is who is going to be the short-term loser and the short-term winner? And there's a lot of people buying distressed Greek debt, and they all want to be bailed out. They're going to buy it at 30 cents on the dollar or 40 cents on the dollar, and they're going to look for uh, the people of Greece to bail them out by having austerity and by buying their assets on the cheap. And there are, if they default, then all of a sudden banks in France and Germany are bankrupt. And you're going to find out that pension plans and insurance plans and all of other these banking institutions that are, are broke, and we know them to be broke, are going to collapse both there and the U.S. We know with MF, MF Global is what happens there is when, when one of these things, the wheels roll off the car, and the customers get hurt. Well, and, and, and if we, you know, we're talking about things that could happen, but if we look at perspective, you know, perspective is in, in 2007, you know, Bear Stearns, and then a little bit later, Lehman Brothers, and then, then you know, all hell broke loose uh, with the financial collapse, personally, that I believe was uh, unleashed in order for them to unload their failure onto the people of the world. But comparatively speaking, if, if sovereign debt, if public failure, or I mean, if pu- uh, private debt has been turned into public failure, fraudulent failure over the last four years, and the end result is this uh, accumulation of uh, unpayable sovereign debt, what is, the, is, is Greece the Lehman moment that, uh, you know, if well, they reject this offer, is it, is it a cascading effect instantaneously? Well, most of this, or, most of this board zoning is just for a tradable moment. And, you know, we've been talking about Greece now for a year, and it's been a year at least, two years. And it's the same story over and over again is uh, you can watch the euro move to it. Today the euro got stronger and the uh, – I'm sorry, the, today the euro got weaker and the dollar got stronger and the stock market go down. And then all these computers are making money on this thing. Right. And not realizing that the economy that I described is broke. The six pillars of that economy are broke. So all of these financial models become less useful to you. As your economy breaks down, because what your economy has at the end of the day to rely upon is the physical world. And well, let's the, pretend for a second. Let's pretend for a second. And the, that, and the human capital yeah. and the transportation. So if you're in Greece and you have 30 percent unemployment, if you're in the U.S. and you have 30 or 40 or 50 percent unemployment, then your human capital isn't worth very much, is it? No, no, and, it's not. It's and, not. And, and the real and, and the real value of human capital is obvious. We, we see uh, wages go down year after year after year, uh, and, and uh, this is in the midst of a recovery to 8.3 percent uh, unemployment, 440,000 jobs uh, allegedly created over the last two months. But but let's let's say that well, Greece. We, we need a bank holiday. What the globe needs is a bank holiday. But here's the problem: you could have an honest bank holiday, where all the fraud is taken out of the system, and savings is protected. And then when you get out of that bank holiday, you could rebuild your economy after taking a huge hit. But what we're aiming for now is sort of a bank holiday where it's done to facilitate fraud. Right. And, 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 and it will steal savings at every turn. Sure. And, With- and it's going to steal your job. And there are no solutions that are out there on the political landscape. And, you know, if you had seen any of these things could have been prevented, uh, you know, Bill Black, I've been trying to call up Bill Black because he talks about the prosecutions and the savings and loan crisis. They could have gotten rid of the fraud in 2008. They chose not to do so. They could have had a health care plan to create more health care. They didn't do that. Just They're just uh, slicing the pie smaller and smaller. And that is the monetary structure breaking. And every time it breaks, the rule of law gets adjusted and we get closer to fit the, the model. We hit the model. And then all of a sudden our transportation will be affected, our human capital becomes worthless, and then you're left with what you have in front of you in the physical world. And all of these things, when they work together, they're great multipliers. You have a guy heading with ex- special expertise. He's able to go on a plane now and transfer technology somewhere. He's not able to do that if the law isn't there. How many people have not visited the U.S. because it's become a security state? How, many, how much money has the U.S. lost in tourism? So that's when the rule of law breaks down, your transportation layer breaks down. That's what's happening right now. It's a government policy to break down the transportation through the through through all of these agencies, and that's what they're they're doing. They're going. The, the government is looking at it, saying, "Okay, 
if, if private industry can't fill the gap, then we will by rewarding friends and family and helping the looting process. Quickly, how does the physical, the physical world pillar, how, where are we sitting on that? Well, look around you. I mean, as I said, I, I took pictures of my local farm. It was a lobster farm. All the lobster was from Maine and from Canada. So that's transportation reliant. So you have an oil embargo or oil shortage. How do you get that done? You know, in the Soviet Union, when I was traveling hitchhiking in, in, in uh, some of these East Bloc countries, you know, I went to get a taxi cab. It was a lot of, and I opened up the trunk. There was no room for my bag because it was a natural gas tank in that. So these people were really innovative and problem solving, dealing with what they had. Or in other countries, you know, in Florida, I have an electric water heater. In other countries in the same area, they have tanks on top of their roofs to bake the, the water in these tanks to use as hot water. And when it's a cold for a few days, they have cold water. So those are people that are better adjusted to the physical world. And the U.S. economy isn't structured very well. What it's structured for now is fraud. And that's exactly what we have. We have less health care. We have less energy. We have less, less education, even though more people are educated. We have more fraud. We have less, less discussion on the serious issues. We have more discussion on sports in the Super Bowl. I mean, they're having a ticket tape party on that in New York City mm -hmm. tomorrow. We don't have real candidates in our electoral process. So I'm just describing you what it is. And, you know, their economic models are wrong. The political models are wrong. Uh, it's a propaganda model.